Isn't it my friend? You have a woman in your life who I don't think gets enough credit by many people, and that's Rachel. Honestly, without her, there's none of these things that I've done would, would happen without her. I wanted a family. I longed for a family. You know, she got pregnant, we got Nick. Before Nick was born, we found my brother and sister. While she was pregnant, she took in two other kids who couldn't speak a word of English. And I was not in a, in a good place. I was wilding. I was living like I had no family. She stayed with me. She always saw the person that I could become. And, and, and she believed it. And, and you know, when, when someone loves you at your worst, then you know that's a person. And she's seen me at my worst. I am a 37-year-old man, and even I think, because for me, I, I'm, I'm struggling with the death of my mother. But like, I walk around like everything is fine, but I'm, I'm absolutely hollow inside. I'm lost mm. like I could never imagine. And I've been thinking about going to therapy. We started seeing one together as a couple. The marriage counselor, when she was talking to me alone, she realized that, you know, you grew up in the township, you don't have time to think about that you're not okay. Because everything we're exposed to, you think it's okay because everybody sees it. Mm. Seeing death as a young kid, mm. you know, seeing your mother getting beaten in the street. When you see all those things... Continuously. Continuously, and then it started becoming normal. M my heart was so hard because of everything that I've seen, you know? And I had to learn because my dad didn't speak to him. Mm. Only when I was 30 years old, when I was shooting my documentary, I spoke to my dad for I the first I time. I saw that moment. And he said, I'm not speaking to you. <laughs> he was like, he was like, ah, I'm going to tell you where you come here. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that, for me, I've never, and that moment was such a beautiful moment because you could see him being the most tosser man possible going, 100%. I, I'm, I'm not going to talk in front yeah. of the camera. He spoke to me after. And after he finished speaking to me, he's, this is off camera now. Then I went back to the hotel and he came to me and he looked at me and says, this is the best I've ever felt in a long time. And I told him, do you know, I got so emotional. I said, that's why, that is why we need to make sure that we look after each other. When I ask you, how, how are you doing? I ask you again, how are you actually doing you inside? Because all you do, it's say, grand chop, chop, we move on, but we don't go deeper yeah, yeah. in that. And that's why it's important when you see a therapist, no one's gonna know, he's gonna, not gonna tell anyone it's, it's under his thing. It's just you and having a conversation with a random stranger. But the therapy part about it, we need to talk about seeing therapists. Because from yeah. now, I'm thinking about it now. Um, yeah, no, 100%. We should a whole lot more. You and I really meet eye and eye is, is talking about gender-based violence and all those things. But uh, our culture is definitely led by women. And, and I don't think we can be free if women are, str are struggling and suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, until there's equal rights for all, uh, until women aren't being mutilated and raped and killed continuously. If we all have that mindset, as people in South Africa, I'm telling you, things will start turning around and going forward. I remember um, I had a pad drive and you brought pads. Yeah. Uh, the future yeah. captain of the Springboks built sanitary pads. And I was uh, so happy. Yeah, it, 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 it's incredible to see, but I definitely feel if we can have the Springbok captain and a guy who, who's an actor who travels around the world doing things, talk about sanitary pads, talking about period poverty and how the injustices of women are definitely need to be changed. It's a step in the right direction. I remember why I did it because you told me so many girls, because there's always the, the low pass rate in the township. When you told me so many girls don't go to school, mm. they miss school because they don't have sanitary pads. Young girls are missing an average of five days a month, times up by 12, times up by five, right? It is so, it's part of a huge problem a lot of people don't talk about. And to make it okay that young boys don't get, to, they know that this is a normal thing. This is what women have to go through. I love, even in sport now, it's been, it's been brought up, you know. And I think it should be like that because this whole world is made for us to succeed as men. And that's what I've loved about you, that, you know, you, you also are able to call someone out on any platform. And it should be like that. And that's how I see life. That's how this country should be. We should be like this, you know, and we much stronger together like this. If you're struggling, if I'm if I'm doing well and you're struggling, I'm not doing well until you get on your feet and do stronger.